I know what you're thinking. Tim, why are you in your underpants when I thought you don't wear underpants? And you'd be right, I do not wear underpants. It makes no sense. Two layers of waistbands, two layers of thickness rolled up material inside your it makes no sense. But that's a topic for another video. But the reason I'm making an exception today and you see me in underpants is all in the name of science and biomechanics because we're talking about the back chain, the bunda, gluteus maximus, hamstringimus dermidius, and I need to show you my PhD, AKA my thick gat, as my seven year old nephew would say, which is crazy. So as we established in the last video, the back is for go and the front is only for show. No, we didn't establish that. The front is stability, the back is for go. A bit of a simplification, but we start here. We start with a skeleton cardboard out Lied structure blueprint and then we round the edges of the human body. If you look at typical traditional exercises for these body parts you'd look at squats and deadlifts but if there is no mind muscle connection there it's very hard to recruit that area of the body and then it won't even then it won't really translate to our physical athleticism on the field of play or just the everyday walking around life. If we can get a mind muscle connection to these body parts, then we can go and do the squats and deadlifts or we can do what we want and we'll have a far better use of using the correct body parts to do the right jobs. The way I see it as God designed it, there's backup plans. So we can not use it as the fully intended purpose and there'll still be a way for us to function. And we can do that for a while until things get really bad. But if you wanna use the controls of the body in the correct manner, that's what we're here today, to get the mind-muscle connection back to your back chain, to these massive flipping muscles, to get them to do the job. When we are quad heavy and the quads are doing more than the job that they were designed to do, they end up getting tight, they end up pulling on the hip flexors, we end up working all of our hinge movements come from our lower back and quads. These two diagonal pairs rather than these two diagonal pairs, right? So in this video, I'm gonna give you one quick demonstration of how to stand up from sitting. Then we're gonna have one static exercise and one dynamic exercise that you can follow along at home. So if I was to stand up from sitting down, there are several ways I could do it. I could use my quads and drive up like that, or I could use the more efficient way. It's a lot easier on the body, takes a lot less effort to do, and that's to hinge forwards and then stand up using my glutes and hamstrings. Now this is, may look super simple, but it's actually what it can teach us about biomechanics is really quite profound and a wonderful thing because this is the foundation of so much movement. If I break this movement down, again, I love it. So simple and yet there's so much here going on. It's two movements, right? I'm hinging forward. My chest is dropping as my butt comes up. So that's almost effortless, right? I just drop my chest and my butt comes up. So barely any muscle recruited to have to do that. A Little bit of quad squeeze maybe. Something like that to just swap these positions. Then from here, I can squeeze with my kind of hamstring, the gluteal fold here between the hamstrings and the glutes. And that stands me up. No weight in the lower back, not having to use the thighs for the job, using massive muscles, long elastic muscles to shorten, and I'm stood up nice and easy. So if you want, you can try that with me. Try that, we'll go through it one more time. Try it with me. So you're sitting, feet, whatever, wherever your feet are, doesn't really matter. All we're gonna do is hinged forward, so we're kind of like in this forward fold, kind of like, is it Balu in the Jungle Book? Ubi do, yeah? And then from here, thinking about squeezing my hamstrings and glutes here to hinge me upright, hips tucked, ready to go. Using the big prime movers to do the job, not grinding out with the quads. Now, of course, as you get more finessed, a human doesn't always stand up like this. You see a baby stand up like this, so we're kind of resorting back to that, and then we're gonna smooth the edges so it becomes, we can stand up still using those same muscles, but without having to do the forward fold to get there. But in the beginning, we simplify, go through the straight edges before we curve. That's a real quick demo. Now let's try one static exercise to wake up your hamstrings. So, if you look at my man here, superficial back line, hamstrings, connect through the heel. So it comes, you can see it into the heel here. In this one, it shows the full range through the heel into the front of the foot. A lot of us are on our forefoot moving, but we don't have that back chain connection. So if we go back onto the heel, 
that'll help us wake up. It's like doing the first layer of the Rubik's Cube in the right order rather than just trying to skip to the final layer when we've not done the first layer. So we're going to go back to our heels. So if you have some sort of coffee table, blocks, something to put our weight on, right? And rather than be forefoot, which now I can access my hamstrings being on the forefoot, for, for many of us won't feel that. So we start in the heels. Now imagine from your heel to your hip bone is like the edges of a bow and arrow. And this hole through the calf Achilles hamstring is the elastic in the bow and arrow. And we wanna create tension in that whilst keeping the knees bent. We're not locking the legs and doing it. There's tension and we're driving through the heels, lifting the butt up. So I'm not tucked the hips under. I'm trying to tilt it backwards now and drive through the heels. You could even like, imagine you're pulling on something like you are gonna do a deadlift maybe, but through the heels with the butt back like so. Now from here, you wanna feel that tension in the hamstrings or the glutes or the layer in between slowly while that tension's there keeping the tension in the back go to one leg and you should feel the tension increase because we've just doubled the weight on one leg and there i can feel my hamstring is nicely working and stabilizing almost recalibrating just to stay there balanced and i've got my support here i'm not trying to like overly get it's not about chasing at deep range on this it's just about driving through the heel lifting the butt up and driving through the heel and allowing the hamstring to take the weight of the body. This huge muscle, giant battery here, taking the weight of the body, all the while thinking about lightly driving the heel through the ground. Get us out of these quads into this back chain. And then after a few minutes, a minute or two, again, you can go to two feet, slowly shift to one, driving through the heel, light bend in the knee. You see, I'm kind of pulling my toes towards my kneecap as well. So toes kind of up, driving through the heel, knee slightly bent, and I'm just creating that tension into the hamstring. Boom. And then from here, once you've been here for a minute or two, you can then start to go to the front foot, maintaining the connection through the hamstring. And that's how we build this and develop the use of the back chain into our movement, our walking, our running. Right, so that's one static exercise you can do. Again, we're searching this feather barrier mechanism. We're trying to use support regression to go light so we can activate this. And boy, my hamstrings feel incredibly nourished right now. Loads of nourishing blood and warmth in the hamstring. And that's what I'm feeling right now, just from a couple of minutes of doing that. So that was the static exercise. Now let's give you the dynamic hamstring exercise. To do this, you're gonna need four candles. Four candles, no, broomstick handles. <laughs> Some sort of support, you can do it in a doorway. You can do it without, once you get used to it, you can do it without. But in the beginning, I'd recommend using some form of support for balance. So we're gonna start standing on two feet with our ski poles for balance. And you're just gonna slide one leg backwards, but there's no weight in it. I'm just sliding it backwards. All my weight is through that front leg, right? Boom. So I'm not doing a yoga, you know, warrior pose, whatever we wanna do. The weight is still over the front leg. And you can see I'm on my toes here and my butt's in the air. So I'm sliding back, right? And now I'm gonna push with my quad to lift my butt. And as I do that, you see, boop, my toes flick over. So all I've done is I've just shifted. So I'm now I'm primed, ready to go. And then through my heel, through the floor, I'm gonna stand up. And you see it just drags my toe in. Slide back, lift the butt and flick the toe. And then using the hamstring, I'm gonna pull with the hamstring. Imagine it's like you're, I don't know, chewing with the hamstring. It's shortening and that's pulling you up to standing. And you see it, it tucks my hips and everything. My spine is almost a static line and the leg comes in and the spine goes up. The only thing I'm doing is pulling on my hamstring. The rest of the body stays almost stiff as a board and just is like relaxed but stiff if that makes sense. So the work is just happening. My spine is one neutral beam. And that's very simply this uh, like toe drag hinge. Boom. So I'm demonstrating one more time on the other leg real quick. And then I'm gonna give you a workout program to do this. Five minutes, really easy. 
So, standing on the one leg, slide the other one backwards on the toes, but the weight's in the front foot. Lift the butt, flick the toe, toe drag up to standing. My hamstring is lighting up right here. Boom, boom, boom. Film yourself, compare it. It will take some precision, some control of the body, but when you get it right, it's incredible for lighting up your hamstring. Increase, and this is where we blend the gap between, okay, you've got the mind-muscle connection from the static. This is how we start to put it into practice, into movement. A real simple way to do this. Five minutes, put a five minute timer on. Every 20 seconds, do two reps on each leg. Two reps left leg, two reps light, right leg. Wait, you know, you might be at 10 seconds, 15 seconds. When it hits the 20, go again. When it hits 40, go again. When it hits a minute, go again. Up until five minutes. You might not be able to walk properly the next day, the first time you do this. Possibly the first few times. You are waking up something, a giant beast of a behemoth of a giant muscle that is probably not getting utilized properly. You know, you're doing this with body weight and you're probably gonna get DOMS. So in my eyes, something corrective is happening in your body. That's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more like this, consider joining me at theschoolofbiomechanics.com. You can check out the video recommended right here or stay tuned for the next one where I'm always going to be dropping some biomechanical knowledge to help you get out of pain or maximize your athletic potential. Godspeed.